What happens when you're cruising through the good old marketplace because rest in peace to Craigslist and you come across the car, the car that was once the most influential car to come out of the three little acronymed cars, a car that decided to truly be different because guess what? <laughs> it's okay to be a little different every once in a while. You don't have to be the same as everyone else. Why is our roof leaking? Anyway, it's okay to put hot sauce on, you know, French fries. All right, it's time for some fries. Yeah. Oh, man. Because if you don't judge, it's okay to try iced coffee every once in a while, even though you think it's overpriced. And it's it's not, it's actually not okay to ever put ketchup on noodles, though. So don't ever even think that that's okay. I'm Alex. Alex said I find on Instagram. And today we're going to be talking about a generation of car that is an absolute banger of a car. And although it loves water pumps more than I love free food, it's still Fun, okay, a car that was unique even within its own manufacture and helped pave the way for people to be okay with BMW doing a little turbocharged skis in three series, okay? It was a bit sacred before, a little sacrilegious. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna be talking about you wanting to own an E90 to E92 BMW 3 Series. And if you're just jumping into this video, oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com. And if you're just watching this video, I'm sorry I haven't done anything to my face because I lost my electric shaver. But in terms of wheels, tires, suspension, we have everything your little heart desires. It's true, we have lots for your newly acquired E92 or otherwise. And with that being said, let's take a look into this beautiful little collage experiment from BMW. Also, we have a new giveaway going on with Flowform, Michelin, and of course, function and form, it's an absolute banger. That's all I got for you. What else do you want from me? The year was 2006. Google had purchased YouTube and Bo Burnham made a song about it. And I was going to be a big boy as a freshman in high school. <laughs> Pretty fly. It was awesome, had the bangs and everything. Pretty bang, all right? They didn't block RuneScape as well, so that was actually pretty nice because you could go into the classrooms and then just play it while you're taking, <coughs> you're typing classes. And in the automotive world, BMW is finally releasing the next generation of three series, a sloping line across the hood and to the back with aggressive, angry headlights that would give this three series finally an update to the now dated E46. Now that's a little bit mean to say, but the E46 was looking a little dated at the time. And to be fair, BMW had been working on a new design all the way since mid 2002. Honestly, it blows my mind a little bit how early these designs get frozen and then they don't look bad four years later. Like, have you seen yourself from four years ago? Like even like the shirts that you used to wear or hairstyle? Like, have you seen just me like two days ago? The Frozen design by Joji Nagashima and Mark M, we're gonna say, cause I'm gonna butcher that last name, used the iconic BMW styling to ensure the three series would remain the most popular selling BMW because they were pretty much considered the French fries of the car scene. You just can't go wrong. Okay, nearly always good, but they're not too expensive. You can get fries for like three bucks now. It's actually pretty nice. The car immediately won World Car of the Year, not only because of the design, but because BMW's Norbert Reithofer and Burkhardt Gosch G challenged the status quo to get this car to full production in three months versus six once released. It was actually pretty insane. It allowed BMW to blitz the competition in an extremely fast way that put the car out to market extremely fast. That paired with the production capabilities in Germany and South Africa allowed the cars to be imported insanely quick. And before you knew it, the BMW E90 generation of cars were everywhere, literally everywhere. BMW does a really good job with that car. The car did insanely well, and although it's not the oldest car in the book by today's standards, it's still a proper looking car for being nearly 15 years old. Now that it was designed in 2002, that makes it 18. And while people were picking up the smaller motors or diesel variants, there was a few that stood out, most notably a three liter turbocharged N54 and N55 inline six, and a four liter S65 V8 that would come in the M3. We'll talk about that a little bit later, all right? Off the lot, nearly all E90s to E92s, which is just the sedan, coupe, and convertible model because they wanted to make it difficult, wanted you to remember E93, E92, they were all pretty decent. There was a facelift in the middle of the generation and that came with a few different motor options as well. The most notable non-M would be the 335i with the N54 turbocharged motor. That's a little bit of a finicky conversation 
but would ultimately be updated to a twin scroll N55 engine in 2009. The E90 series would go until 2011, the 91 until 2012, and 92 until 2013 and the E93 until 2013 as well. The E90 series was pretty much in every racing game and real race you could possibly imagine. Car and Driver loved it so much, they rated it the top 10 best eight times in a row from 2006 to 2013. Oh, Brown knows her that one. I would probably say that in terms of doing it that many times, it's like they just took the list from last year and they're like, yes, 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 yes. Um, yep, let's just put that BMW right up there. Okay, makes it easy. The car was damn good, but no one really seems to care about it that much anymore. And the question is why? Por qué? Okay, why does the E90 to E93 3 Series get overlooked right now? And more so, why does the M3 of this generation seem to get passed up on? It's got a four liter V8, son. It should love everybody. One of the first times BMW ever did something like this with a 3 Series. It had a lighter aluminum body panels, it had linear power curve, and it still looks like it drinks pop before going to bed. I know it's heavier. We're gonna get over that. The E92 M3 had a carbon fiber roof, okay? It came with an optional double clutch automatic fancy gearbox that was new to the game that allowed it to rev up to 8,400 RPM. There's nothing better than a V8 that can rev above 7,000 RPM. This one went to 84. I mean, what else could you want? That's a good point, me. Hey, thank you, all right? The E92 M3 had pretty much every single recipe for success, and even with all the technology, it somehow found itself on the last page of people's searches for a fun summer car. And it makes me sad, even though I know people disagree. So you want an E90 to E92 3 Series, including, but not limited to, the good old M3. Well, set down your favorite Ramstein tune and grab your high pressure fuel pump because we're about to talk about what it's like to own one of these angry bemmers. One of these guys that seems like people love and love to hate, like Nickelback. If you're looking to just jump into a newer 3 Series, the E90 to E92 is a great pickup. The two biggest things you need to remember is this. They can be expensive to keep alive. And number two, they can be expensive to keep alive. The E90 to E92 all suffer from the typical BMW maintenance items. And because of their typically comprehensive systems, but not entirely limited to, nothing is really a major red flag for ownership. Just try to get one with low miles that has had the damn fuel pump and basic items taken care of, and you're gonna have a pretty good okay time but you're still buying a bmw so maintenance and all that sort of stuff just has a higher price it's like going to a supper club versus going to outback steakhouse okay there are people that would recommend you keep an eye on your aluminum bolts as you will need to find new ones anytime work is done on the car because they can't be reused and uh, if you want to play a fun garage game you know, you can actually just use aluminum fasteners, drop one in the engine bay, and then try picking it up with a dandy magnet stick. It ain't gonna work. It ain't, it ain't gonna work. It's a terrible game. The game sucks. Anyway, come back later and let me know how it does. The cooling systems are sensitive and the cars have some weird quirks like side mirrors going too far out and then clicking and it kind of sounds, it's actually very uncomfortable watching because it goes past and be like, ah, ah, and that's actually, um, it's actually kind of normal. Justin uh, boosts. Justin B taught me that, and Lars, our buddy that drives his M2 now, he had a 335 that did that constantly. By the way, Justin, B-U-I-C-E, is going to be a fantastic resource if you guys are seriously looking at like an E90 through E92. I'm serious, the dude's an absolute champ. He shares a ton of information on these cars, and a lot of it is really good stuff. The 335s with the N54 motor are pretty common to purchase and modify because of the community following. And if you're unfamiliar with the N54 engine, Miata, there's a Miata right there. There's Miata, Miata with the sunflower wheels. Nice. But people either love or hate the N54 platform, and you might be wondering why, and that's a great question. Transition. The N54 has some notable flaws. High pressure fuel pump, leaky valve covers, okay, it's got leaky injectors sometimes, boost issues every once in a while, and there has been issues with carbon buildup. But, let's be honest. All motors are gonna have issues, and they aren't insane by any means. It's just like the labor cost. That's what's gonna get you. All right, these issues get amplified when you throw power at these cars with intakes, exhaust, and tunes, and all that good stuff. You'll start throwing your car into limp mode a lot. Handling leaks more often, and of course people will say, well, you bought an N54, what do you expect? And that is true, but not true. You're gonna wanna slap those people. Don't slap them, we don't encourage violence. I gotta talk to that guy about his Miata. Not really, but when it comes down to working within a variance on the N54 cars, ensuring that you play around with them, you know that you're doing you know, okay work. You just gotta be careful with them, all right? Careful, go slow. N54 owners can be finicky. 
And if you're gonna buy one that's already modified, you gotta be super careful who you're buying it from. If you're looking for an E92 M3, on the other hand, boy, oh boy, are there exciting things waiting for you, okay? You get a carbon fiber roof, six speed manual exhaust, and you are set, baby. There are individuals that will claim that it feels a little heavy, a little disconnected, a little doggish. And in certain situations, that can be true for you, especially if you're coming from a lighter, more tight M3 from the previous generations. But the M3 still isn't really a slouch. It has a bigger body, bigger motor. It feels more domestic than Euro at times. And that is why it kind of throws some Euro lovers off because it's a little bit more loosey-goosey. BMW's ultimate answer to that was the M2 and then the M4 split in the newer generation so that the M3 could go back to being its own thing, except it was a four-door, which was weird but BMW does what BMW wants to do. And if you're looking at getting an E90, just remember your options for wheels and tires and suspension are pretty much like Rotiform and Rohana and like maybe two more. And that's just because they've locked down the look on those cars. And sometimes the sizing can get a little weak. Coilovers, if you don't have the adaptive suspension, you should stick to maybe some function and form, maybe even BC coilovers and tires, you'll definitely want some decent ones. If you're looking to pick up something that's like an XI or an all year round car, you're definitely gonna wanna get some all seasons. If you got an M3, grab some Michelin Pilots 4 4Ss. The car deserves to have constant traction. And when you dial in your suspension, have a nice set of wheels, you'll see why people love the BMW platform. And people will love this generation the most because you can pick some up for a pretty good deal. You just gotta be careful because if you pick up the wrong one, it's gonna hurt really bad. The E90 to E93 generation was a little bit of a weird one. They made a ton, they were modified a ton, and they have a huge home in the automotive community, but you don't hear them talked about as much anymore as you used to, especially the M3 variant of this specific generation. They paved the way for the new generations of M cars that nearly everyone loves besides the CS. That one's over there on its own island, okay? It's got a little bit of a bubble butt and it can be picky with modifications, but they're also everywhere. And if you're looking for a newer generation car that has a decent interior, okay? Sounds pretty decent. Can be a little higher end and still make you regret it every once in a while, just like every strong relationship should be about with the occasional repair that makes you cry, then get an E90. Seriously, we'd be best friends, me and you, if you got an M3, because more, we need more of them, all right? We need more of them. So what do you think about the E93 series, all of them? Tell us which one is your favorite. Tell us whether you like the N54 or despise the N54. It's always a fun one when we get to see that. Let us know, of course, and if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmanindustries.com, where we literally have everything. I'm serious, and pretty cool, okay? And let us know what you want us to talk about next. So the guy that's saying we need to do a uh, history about Forge Star, I hear you, I see you. I'm gonna need about seven to 45 more of those. All right, I'm Alex from Fitment Industries. We will see you later. Peace.